Rakata Yahweh Shah, Rakata Yahweh, Rakata Yahweh, Rakata Yahweh Shah. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rikam Kudash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, today's lesson, I'm going to go into um, dealing with uh, the prophets, okay, and uh, prison, okay, in um, whatever form it came in based on their respective time periods, and um, just showing you how. It was commonplace, you know, for, for prophets to be thrown in prison or, uh, uh, you know, uh, came after, all right, so to speak, you know, and this was uh, all because of them speaking righteousness or of them doing the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, and so keeping that in mind, you know, as we're seeing uh, Esau, you know, getting ready with his, uh, 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 you know, his different legislations. Okay, pitching his case, putting them together to come against us, it, it shouldn't come as a shock or a surprise because this is commonplace. This has happened over the over the different uh, centuries, you know, in various with various different rulers, okay, in various different empires, and it all happened for the same reason, you know, because if, if and I have a couple of different uh, accounts here in the scriptures where men of the Lord were, uh, um, you know, speaking righteousness prophesying you know or rebuking and in return <clears throat> they were thrown into prison they were killed they were arrested because that was you know the world as, as john said the world life in darkness all right the, the whole world is, is is in wickedness and so to speak the truth to speak prophecy okay you are you are a, a threat you know you're a threat to the world so you can expect within whatever empire you're in if you are speaking the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, you can expect that they will, you know, do everything in their power to stop you. <clears throat> okay, and so in most cases, you get arrested, you get thrown in prison, you get killed. Okay, as we're about to read. Okay, and that's that's also a part of bearing the cross because in this time period, you know, some some of us are going to get caught, but hey, as the Lord said, this time is going to be different. You know, this time you're not going to back us into a corner anymore. And this time when you do come in like a flood, the Lord is going to lift up a standard. All the previous times the Lord had to suffer, you know, he had to, he had, we had to suffer, you know, uh, going through these things for prophecy's sake. But this time the prophecy is, is, is on, is on our side. The prophecy is, is, is on our, is for our defense. All right. So this is Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 10. And um, this is basically what the Lord told Jeremiah to go prophesy. Okay, and it says here, Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessel. And oftentimes the Lord will have prophets do certain things, you know, commit certain actions to represent you know what on a smaller scale but to represent what would happen overall to the nation of israel it says that cannot be made whole again and they shall bury them in tophet till there be no place to bury and basically what jeremiah was doing was he was prophesying onto the southern kingdom about the uh the babylonians coming to take over because the lord at that time was raising up a uh, babylon all right to come over and ultimately fulfill prophecy. All right. <clears throat> so it says, um, verse uh, verse 12, Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet, and the, and the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses of the kings of Judah, shall be defiled as the place of Tophet. Because, let's look up, It 
It says place of fire, a uh, place of the southeast end in the valley of the son of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem. Okay, and what happened ultimately when the Babylonians came? They 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 burnt the whole joint down. You know, they not only destroyed the temple and the walls, but they they burnt it. Okay, it says um, because of because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. So Jeremiah was prophesying unto them the consequences, all right, of, of them not taking heed to the words and the warnings of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And in return, this is what they did. All right, uh, Jeremiah 21, it says, Now for sure, uh, the son of Emer, or I, I, Imer, uh, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Okay, so... Jeremiah doing the will of Yahweh by Shem El Shai. This is let's see what they did. Did he go up there and, 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 and give him a round of applause and you know what I'm saying uh, uh, exalt him? It says then for sure um smote Jeremiah the prophet. He smote him and put him in the stocks, okay, that were in, in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Now when you look up stocks, all right. Let's, let's uh bring it up real quick. It says similar instrument of punishment, compelling crooked pro uh, posture or distorting house of stock. So I'll show you what it actually looks like. Uh, stocks uh, punishment. All right, so it will look something like, uh, you know, something like this. All right, or something like that, or something like this. You know, basically where your your hands, you know, some of them will have your hands and your feet, you know, stuck in there. Or some of them will have you standing with your hands, all right, in there. And what it does is, let's say you're, you're, uh, you're uh, in a position like this, right? You're you're not in a, in a straight posture. Okay, now it may, not, oh, it may not seem as bad to begin with, but over time you'll realize that it starts to actually hurt and it starts to affect your body. You know, you know when you're when you're sitting down hunched over for a long time and uh, uh, you stand up, you gotta stretch because now your spine starts to hurt. Your spinal cord starts to hurt because you're hunched over for so long, okay? And so in, in certain cases where they have your legs stretched, you know, and you know, the your, 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 your legs, you know, when the blood circulation isn't going through your legs, your feet die. You know, and they'll say my leg, my leg died where you stand up and you can barely feel your legs. Okay, so it was a form of punishment. I can't describe to you the exact feeling because I haven't been put in a stock and I don't want to be put in a stock. But um, you can see what it looks like. And it seems to be an effective form of punishment, which is why they used it on Jeremiah. Okay, and not only on this account, but there was another account where they threw him into a pit. Or I believe it was dung in there. You know, and, and, you know, he basically thought he was going to die in there until the Lord had mercy on him and delivered him. But the main point I wanted to get was in the first two verses here that notice that it said when he heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things, then he went and smote him and threw him, uh, put him in the stocks, you know. So for, for you know, for doing the right thing, these were the, the consequences of doing so. Okay, and as I'm going to keep on reading through, you're going to see that it's it's very similar, all right, that all these men did one thing in common, was to, was to, was to speak through the spirit of the Heavenly Father and the Son, and in return, it's almost like doing good and being repaid evil. So, it's not going to change, you know what I'm saying, in this time, in terms of the reaction of the, uh, the, uh, the, um, those that are in rulership at the moment, Okay. So this is uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 13. And this was dealing with uh, Ahab and um, uh, Jehoshaphat. I believe that was his name. Yep, Jehoshaphat. Basically, um, 
you know, they had made an alliance and they were going up to fight, if I'm not mistaken, against uh, the Syrians. Um, and so they called onto the prophets, all right, to tell them what would happen. Okay, and um, uh, uh, when Jehoshaphat came there, he asked Ahab if there's any prophet of the Lord, okay, over here. And so they went and they called Micaiah. And we're about to read what happened to Micaiah for speaking the words of Yahweh by Shem Shai. So this is 1 Kings 22 and 13. It says, And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Now, here's the thing, though. The prophets that were speaking of one word, they were speaking a lie, you know? And why is that? It was because the Lord had put the Spirit on them to speak a lie, so that uh, prophecy may be fulfilled. So, let's see what happens to Micaiah, all right, in, in the decision he decides to make, okay? So, it says, um, verse 14, And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And if you notice, the people who were thrown in prison and ridiculed for speaking the words of the Lord, they were the true prophets. You don't you don't really hear of false prophets getting thrown up into prison and being persecuted for the Lord, you know? Uh, verse 15, So he came to the king and said unto him, Micaiah, oh, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go up or shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall we forbear? And he answered, him go and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king and um, he was basically uh, you know being sarcastic he wasn't you know he was toying with him all right verse 16 you know, oh yeah sure go 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 you know you got it look, 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 it's going, you know he's gonna give you that and the king said unto him how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord and he said I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the, and the Lord said, uh, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left hand, and on his left and the lord said who shall persuade ahab that he may go up and fall at ramoth gilead and one said on this manner and another said on that manner so they were all it was like a council they were all pitching ideas i'll do this i'll do that and there came forth a spirit and stood before the lord and said i will persuade him and the lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Whoa, I thought the Lord hated lies, but he's 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 allowing one of his angels to go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. All right. In the mouth of the prophets of Ahab. So so meaning that the Lord can have it to where somebody can prophesy a lie onto you and it wouldn't even be in their control because it would be a spirit. That the Lord put on them to, to, to prophesy a lie. All right. It says, and he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Verse 23. Now, therefore, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of uh, Kena, uh, Kenaana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek. See, same thing that happened to Jeremiah. He got smoked or smitten. All right. It says uh, um, on the cheek and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micah and uh, and Micaiah said, behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison, and feed him with the bread of affliction, and with the water of affliction, until I come in peace. So put him in prison, and give him hell. But what? All he did was speak the truth. He spoke, he, he spoke <laughs> you know, the words, all right, or the truth of, of the matter, 
you know, through the spirit of the Lord. But instead, what happened? He was put in prison for speaking the truth. Now, you went and called him and you asked for the truth. When he told you a lie, you got upset and asked him to tell you the truth. When he told you the truth, now you throw him in prison. All right. It says, and Micah, I said, if thou return it, if thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. Okay. And so he went and he died. So the words of Micah came to pass. Okay. But just going to show you that what? For speaking the truth, this this was the reaction he got. He was he got smoked and they threw him in prison. Okay? For speaking the truth. For what? For prophesying. Okay? Because as the Lord said, the world, he said, the world cannot hate you. Uh, uh, um, basically know that if the world hates you, it hated me first. Okay? So the world is gonna hate us for for speaking the words. So like if for speaking the words of righteousness and speaking the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And these all in their respective times. You had Jeremiah, they threw him in the stocks. You had Micaiah, they threw him in prison. Now moving on to Daniel. Okay, let's see what happened. And and, and see, they, they, they all got this consequence for what? For doing righteousness. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 6. Why? Because this is not our world. Daniel 6 and 4 it says, now this is going into when you read when you read up above, it'll tell you that Daniel was basically, um, put, uh, yeah, this was during the time of Darius. And Daniel was, uh, um, you know, basically Darius liked Daniel. So he put him in a high, high position above all the other presidents and, and princes. And they got envious because Daniel was like, there was nothing you can find wrong. You couldn't find any fault with him. So they sought an occasion, okay, <clears throat> just as Esau is going to do. Okay, so that he can entrap and ensnare, and, and, and ensnare us. So this is Daniel 6 and 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. And that's Esau's dilemma. <laughs> then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his power. Religious extremists, black supremacists, BHI. Okay. It says then these presidents, see, they can't. That's why now they're going with, oh, you you can you're inciting. They, they, that's what they're gonna come with. You're inciting violence with the words you're speaking. You're speaking sedition. They they, they know they know that. They cannot, if you say, don't run a red light, we're not going to run a red light. You need a driver's license to drive, we're going to have a driver's license to drive. Don't steal, we're not going to do any of that stuff. Okay, so they can't say, well, these guys are being disobedient to, to our laws. So now what do they have to do? They got to fashion laws that will try to intervene between the one thing, all right, that we will not go against, which is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. And that way they can say, ah, see, you're being disobedient. We told you to stop and you didn't stop. So how do they do that? They have to they have to criminalize the work of the Lord and, and lump it in. You know, and they, they, see, they can't criminalize the word of the Lord by itself. So they need to find something that they can criminalize and make it seem bad, a broad topic like domestic terrorism, and then link you and throw you in there. So the focus isn't on you to the public, it's on domestic terrorism, but then they throw you in there as one of them. So they're very, very crafty. And just as we just read here, they said, what? We can't find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his power. And ultimately, that's what they're going to do. Revelation 2 and 10, they're going to cast us into prison for the Lord's sake. Because they can't just come up out of no, they, they got nothing on us. Verse 6, then these presidents and princes assembled together um, to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Um, and it goes into, you know, well, I'm going to actually read verse 7. And all the presidents of the kingdom and governors and the princes and uh, the counselors and the captains have uh, consulted together to, to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save save of the king 
O king, he shall be cast into the, the den of lions. See, they say, ah, see, that's how we're going to get him. We got to now make it a, a, a criminal act for him to serve his power. And we know that he's not going to stop serving his power. So the second he does it, boom, we got him. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to say, we're going to make it a criminal act for you to go out there and teach teach what you're teaching. A.K.A. for us to serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And they know that we're still going to serve the Lord in the second. Ooh, got them. All right. Uh, verse 8. Now, O king, establish a decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. And that's what they're doing. Bring out the task force, sign these 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 executive orders, do this, then the third, all right, and and so we can have some some ground to move off of. Long story short, he ended up signing it, and we're gonna go down. All right, this is a uh, Daniel six and eleven. I'm just gonna jump through to hit the main point. Uh, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his power. Um, then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Um, has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save o, uh, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, This thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth, altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. So notice how they went and did all of this to make a decree for everybody to follow just so they can get Daniel. You know, just so they can get Daniel. But they couldn't make it seem as though they were targeting him. So they had to make it a wide decree, a broad one. And that's exactly what Esau Edom is doing. But notice how for praying and making supplication to the Lord, even though he wasn't, he was, Daniel wasn't found, they found no fault with him. But for seeking the Lord and doing what was right, they threw him into a lion's den. Okay. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him, trying to find any way, if there's any loophole, any way where, you know, he could, he could you know, get Daniel out because he took a liking to him. The, uh, then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statue which the king establisheth may be changed. Verse 16, then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Oh, whoa, hold up, what? There's a heathen king out here telling, he's trying to tell Daniel to have faith in the Most High, what? You know, <laughs> all right. Verse 17, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. All right. And as you read on through, guess what? Matter of fact, let me read verse 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. So I'm, I'm sorry. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, the heathen king fasted for the sake of Daniel. For the sake of Daniel. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. Very, very interesting, right? Um, but anyway, uh, when you read on down, the main point is, is established that what? They threw Daniel into a lion's den for what? For worshiping Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Just like they threw Jeremiah into the stocks and they threw um, Micaiah in prison. Okay. Now moving on. This is the book of Acts chapter 12. Okay. Um... And I'll just go straight to the point, verse 4. And this is going into um, uh, when they arrested uh, Peter. Okay, now it says, verse 12 and 4, Acts 12 and 4. And when they had apprehended him, they put him in prison. And this is talking about Peter. And delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring, um, which which the word Easter there goes back to Pesach in the Greek, which goes back to um um, no, it goes back to Pascal 
I believe in the Greek, which goes back to Pesach, which is Passover. All right, to bring him forth to the people. See, so for what? For the apostles teaching the words of, of, of Yahweh Shai, all right, the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, they wanted them uh, uh, put in prison and, and killed. Okay, and then they actually put Peter in prison. Okay, and it wasn't just once. You know, there's different accounts where it says they after they were put in prison and they were they were beaten, or they caught them and then they beat them and then they released them and told them stop teaching in the name of the Lord. So are you starting to see the pattern? All right, Peter therefore verse five was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church onto the Most High for him. All right. And I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but definitely read it. It just goes into how the Lord delivered Peter, all right, from, um, you know, from this prison. Now, one thing I will say is when you go through these accounts, guess what? In the time of Jeremiah, eventually he got released from the stocks. And when the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem, guess what? The Lord put the spirit on them to where the, 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 the um, one of the captains was basically i mean they 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 had mercy on jeremiah they were like yo because he was old but they were like hey what you want to do you know you want to come with us or you know you want to stay here they gave him the option you want to come with us or you want to stay here if you come with us we'll take care of you you know if you stay here you, you can stay here whatever you want to do you know as with everybody else they grab him up shackled him up throw him there you going you know took him as as uh captives you see so yes they, they they prophesied they spoke correct things and yes the the adverse reaction that they got was you know from their adversaries was bad and it was consequential but the lord still delivered them <clears throat> why because ultimately what did they do they stood firm and spoke the words of the lord and daniel he got thrown into the lions then guess what the lions ain't touching and he was released okay and in this and then right here we're reading about peter he got thrown into prison guess what the Lord sent an angel to deliver him from prison. Okay? It's, it's like a chess a chess move, you know? We move by speaking the words of the Lord. They move by taking one of our pawns. And then the Lord moves by checkmating their ass. You see? So, it's a, you know what I'm saying? It, whatever the, whatever they try to do, it's, it's like the same formula over and over again. You speak what's right. You face the consequences, you know, of, of whoever it is. But then the Lord delivers you. Okay, because what? Ultimately, you spoke, you did his will. All right, now moving on. Let me close a couple of these tabs. All right, this is the book of Luke, chapter 3, because who else was thrown into prison? Dun, dun, dun. Luke, chapter 3, verse 18, it says, And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. And who is this he? It's talking about John. Okay, matter of fact, I'll start at verse 16. John answered, saying unto them, John the Baptist, All I, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, that uh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. So, once again, John was speaking righteousness. He reproved Herod because what he was doing was going off. What happened to him? And yet, and yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. So, guess what? John the Baptist also got thrown in prison. So, are you starting to see the pattern? It was a, it was commonplace. For, them, for the prophets to be thrown into some form of prison or punishment for doing what they had to do. All right, which was to speak righteousness. Hell yeah, how I got crucified. Okay. But at, when all was said and done, guess what? We're ultimately going to get the biggest reward. Okay. So they're going to do the same thing. It's it, Look, if we're doing, <laughs> it's a cause and effect. You put your hand in fire, you get burnt. You prophesy the word of the Lord, whoever, whatever uh, captivity, whoever is ruler at the time is going to come against you. The Lord said, all you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. All right, moving on. This is the book of Acts 16. Let's see who else was thrown in prison. This is Acts 16 and 18. It says, and this did she many days. Now, this is going into Paul. All right, where um, 
you had a, a woman that had a you know a spirit on her, you know, and um, she was able to to uh, basically uh, foretell you know certain events, and that allowed her her masters, those that owned her, to be able to you know make gain. You know, they could they could see okay, this is what we should do, and this is how we'll win. Okay, and being that she had a spirit on her, when she saw Paul. The spirit within her was was uh, uh, recognized Paul and was like, oh shoot, those are men of the Lord, and so that and she kept following them, saying, those are men of the Lord, those are men of the Lord. So that's where we're at in verse eighteen. It says, and and this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Yahweh Hamashiach to come out of her, because ultimately she had a demon on her, and he came out of her, or and he came out the same hour. So Paul basically rebuked the demon off of her and you could say he healed her because not a demon was off of her but what happened and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone because she couldn't do what she used to do with the with the with the help of the demon they caught paul and silas and drew them into the marketplace onto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying these men being jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. So what customs were they teaching? They were teaching the way of Yahushai. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. So would you look at that? <clears throat> now check this out. Who having received such a charge thr uh, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Didn't that happen to Jeremiah? Okay. But what, what was their reaction for all this? Verse 25. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the, unto the Most High and the prisoners heard them. See? So yet once again you have men of the Lord that got thrown in prison, that got put in the stocks, that got punished for what? For doing the work of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And Paul, Paul, was, Paul went through this many times. You know, even when he came back to Jerusalem and they caught him and, you know, the, the people had even made a vow to slay him. And had it not been for that centurion who came and broke it up, they, they would have tore him up. You know? And then he was put in prison uh, there. You know, he had to go before Festus. Uh, I, I get the two names uh, mixed up. All right, Felix and Festus. Okay. But after that, he went before, you know, the, the Caesar at the time. But this is just showing you what. What happened to men, to the men of the Lord for doing what they did. Okay. And this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'll finish it off here. Uh, verse 22, it says, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Hamashiach? I, I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. All right. In prisons more frequent. So, but, but you would think that a man of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Everything will be all sweet and dandy. You should be protected and good at all times. And, you know. But why, why are they all getting thrown in prison? Okay? And where are the false prophets at? Why, why are we not hearing stories about the false prophets being thrown in prison and going, suffering these these uh, 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 things for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? It says, In deaths oft of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once, uh, uh, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Okay, and then it goes on, so on and so forth. But the main point I wanted to get was in prisons often, all right, or in prisons more frequent to show you that what? Being a man of the Lord, this was a consequence. So when we get to here, all right, Revelation 2 and 10, this should not come as a surprise, all right? Revelation 2 and 10. And that's why Peter said, um, uh, basically, don't, don't be... Uh, um, you know, taken away by the by the fiery trial, which is to try you. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's, let's see that fiery trial. First Peter four and twelve, and then we'll go to Revelation. 
beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Because this is common. It's ex it's expected. I mean, you're preaching another kingdom. You're preaching against, you're preaching the downfall of this kingdom. What do you expect? All right. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So, I mean, that, that's nothing new. <laughs> All right, they've been doing it to us throughout all the different generations. And and why is that? That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Why are they going to cast us into prison? The same reason they cast the men of old into prison. For speaking the words of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So when they do come after us this time, it's not because we've done anything wrong. Jeremiah didn't do anything wrong to be thrown in the stocks. Micah I didn't do anything wrong to prophesy the word of the Lord. Daniel didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Peter didn't do anything wrong. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't do anything wrong. Yahweh didn't do anything wrong. Paul didn't do anything wrong. John the Baptist didn't do anything wrong. Amongst many others. But yet they suffered this consequence. So when we get thrown in prison, it's not going to be because we've done anything wrong. Okay. But it's going to be because actually because we've done everything right <laughs> you know because we're doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai okay so with that I'm gonna end it off here Lord's willing this was edifying unto the elect in closing I want to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rechak Kodash until next time Shalom